That's really about it. As you see, we're going to move on to our third match here between Nicholas Schoolcraft and Michael Edgar. Again, Schoolcraft winning game number one, even though he has life pain zombies, and he was on the draw. So really, inter really interested to see exactly what happened there, but he was able to break serve. Now he's against Edgar. We're going to see a lot of discard here, and we're going to start things off with a thought seize. So Mr. Schoolcraft's going to lay out a Bile Blight. He's got a Desecration Demon. There is a Grey Merchant, and a whole bunch of lands, one Mutable among them. Yeah, so you said lands, Grey Merchant, Desecration Demon, Bile Blight. This most looks like a lot of the Game 1 cards. Um, this hand is potentially weak for Schoolcraft. Uh, Edgar can clear the way here for a pack rat and actually proceed to pack rat his opponent. So you see the thoughts he takes Bile Blight out of his hand. I think that's easily the most relevant card right now. Even if he's not on a pack rat draw, he has Nightfail Spectre in his hand. So Bile Blight is the best card here. Edgar just going to play a Swamp. He has a Bile Blight of his own. He'll play a Swamp. Pass the turn back over to Schoolcraft, who will take a draw picked up. Looks like another copy of Munivault, potentially. Yep, so pretty good draw right now for Edgar. He has Pack Rats covered with his Bile Blight, and he has a card advantage engine in Night Vale Spectre. So you see Spectre is the play for Edgar. So in these Mono Black ma Devotion matchups, it usually comes down to whichever player can get a card advantage engine going first. So Edgar threatening to do that with Night Vale Spectre. And it's going to happen. Now both of them get, get one, though, as uh, Schoolcraft does cast an Underworld Connections. Yeah, Connections was a pretty big draw here. Edgar actually is going to play a Swamp. He's going to play Whip of Erebos right now. Not only is he going to get in for two and trigger the Spectre, but he's going to gain two life as well. He had the option, I believe, to play Desecration Demon that turn if he would have liked. But he chose not to. He'll pick up a Temple of Deceit off of the Spectre yeah. before passing the turn back. I think it's a little aggressive to play the Whip Free Combat, just because if you had hit an Underworld Connections off Schoolcraft's deck, you would have wanted to play Land Connections as opposed to Whip of Erebos. Yeah. That said, he found a Temple, so the play ended up working for him just fine. Yeah, I think chances are there's like a pretty high percentage chance that what you hit with the Spectre, you're just going to put into play, whether it be a Land or something else. You see the grip here from a Duress, a Hero's Downfall, Bile Blight, and that Desecration Demon. So it may have been a touch hasty, but... Either way, the whip is in play for the foreseeable future. It's a card that Schoolcraft cannot get off of the table. Yeah, exactly. So we see that Duress here has the choice between taking Bile Blight and Hero's Downfall. As we know, Schoolcraft's hand has large creatures in it, so I think he'll take Downfall. He has Underworld Connections going as well. Um, he's going to be behind until he finds a kill spell off that Connections, in, in which, in that case, Schoolcraft is almost ahead. The danger is that that whip of Erebos gives Michael Edgar a great late game. If he can find Grey Merchant's whip plus Grey Merchant is almost unanswerable in the Mono Black Mirror. Swamp will be the play after the Underworld Connections activation. You see two copy. You see one Duress, one Desecration Demon. Could fire off the other Duress and take the Bile Blight, but it looks like you may want to try to pick a better spot in this situation. But you could also argue that being mana efficient right now is pretty important, and just taking anything is worth it. Yeah, I mean, you'd normally think, hey, this Duress is going to be dead. What you can do is you can wait when Michael Edgar taps out for some threat, say, like, a Desecration Demon. Um, it's possible that if he drew a non-creature spell that turn, they just simply wouldn't be casting it. So you want to wait until a turn where he taps out for something and then duress him back. Temple going to come into play right away. Going to leave that card on top. Edgar going to attack here with the Spectre. Trigger it. We'll see what he finds on the top of Schoolcraft's deck. And this Whip of Erebos is just going to be a problem for Nicholas Schoolcraft. Yeah, I mean, you can make an argument where, you know, I kind of wanted to play Desecration Demon instead last turn, but, you know, then he would have been duress and taken the whip. And you can make an argument that the whip is so important in the mirror that just getting it into play before he gets targeted by a thought he's a duress is way more important than anything else. Yeah, I think it may play out that way. You see, Desecration Demon made this turn uh, Schoolcraft. I'm not even sure he has the kill spell for the first demon. I'm pretty sure he doesn't have a kill spell for the whipped demon. You see, he does have Grey Merchant. Another copy of Duress, Desecration Demon, Immutable, a couple of swamps over there. So nothing really impressive doing. I think he has to start with this, which is Underworld Connections. Take one, go down to 14. He needs to find some sort of removal spell. I think Hero's Downfall may be the best one right now. Yeah, his draw not too much help there was a Thought Seize, but the cards, the problematic cards are not in Michael Edgar's hand anymore. They're on the board. Yeah, that's the thing about discard, as good as it is, it doesn't beat the stuff that's on the board, doesn't stop the top of the deck. Here's a Desecration Demon. You see Edgar just kind of shrug his shoulders and says, yeah, that's fine. He will take a draw. Pack Rat is the draw. He's able to come from a different angle now altogether. Well, what I really like here is what he can do is he can cast Pack Rat. He can discard to make another Pack Rat. 
and then he can go ahead and tap Demon and swing the team through all of this. Yeah. Gonna leave a Thoughtseize on top from the temple. That's a pretty, that's a very aggressive statement on Edgar's point. It's part if he's keeping Thoughtseize on top, that to me says that he's really content with the board. It looks like he's also content with trading demons right now. Gonna leave Nightville Spectre back on defense. Opting not to make the pack rat play that you talked about. That play's pretty aggressive, not to say that it's wrong. I just think it is a pretty aggressive line of play, paying pack rat activating it, sacrificing the token or the actual copy of Pack Rat, depending on if you want to whip it back or not, to be able to force through some damage here. Yeah, and that Pack Rat and making Pack Rat may still happen. You saw right now that swing of six put, puts Edgar up to 26, Schoolcraft down to eight. And it's going to be hard for Schoolcraft to live through maybe even just the next turn. I think if I'm Schoolcraft, I like a trade there. I think you have to trade. Yeah, I mean, it's being offered. I don't know how much better your demon's going to get. Six is just a lot of damage to take. Yeah, I, I know he has a great merchant in his hand, so that's definitely appealing to just play a great merchant and then gain that six life back. But, boy, that's tough. Now Schoolcraft not even going to attack with the demon. Going to play a swamp. I think he's almost priced into playing great merchant. He does have a dark betrayal in his hand, I believe, now, though. I yeah, see Green Merchant of Asphodel from Nicholas Schoolcraft. It is draining for six here. So that takes the six damage right back. Yeah, it, and the six that he gained, and the six that Michael Edgard gained too. So back to 24 to 14. Schoolcraft going to pass the turn back. This is going to be making a pack rat, as you did mention. And there is your rat token. We'll see him untap in just a moment, and we'll see where we go from there. Yeah, he just has so many threats right now. Uh, it's just, it seems like the way that Schoolcraft can keep pace is that he needs to run off Grey Merchants. Yeah. Thoughts he's the draw along with the Bio Blight that he's had for some time now. Running Grey Merchants is a game plan, that's for sure. Yeah, I think he might make two pack rats here. If he can make two pack rats, then they're all safe from Bio Blights. Thoughtseize will be the choice here, however. He wants to actually see what Schoolcraft has been holding for such a long time. There is the Dark Betrayal. And that's going to take care of the Desecration Demon. It's interesting because, you know, that, uh, that Dark Betrayal, it seems like it's really good, right? It's like, I killed the 6-6, six -six, but there are so many problems out here. Nightfell Spectre is an issue. Pack Rat being an issue right now. The Whip can bring back the Desecration Demon. It's just, it's a world of trouble here. Yeah, I mean, the Pack Rats may end up carrying the day here. If you have an army of life-linked pack rats, that's very hard for the Mono Black Devotion deck to deal with. Um, right now, a top deck Bioblight still gets them, but that's only going to be the case for one more turn. Yep. So Edgar's going to decide how he wants to attack here after casting that Thought Seize. Desecration Demon kind of being a pain in the neck right now, just standing in the way. Could get really aggressive, sacrificing a pack rat. And trying to get in here with the Nightfall Spectre. You can make a pretty decent argument for that too, I think, just because Nightfall Spectre is so good in this matchup. Connecting with it as many times as you can is uh, its almost like winning. See, Schoolcraft's going to take a look at the graveyard here really quick. I think Edgar's considering maybe activating Whip to bring back Desecration Demon. Staring at that Bio Blight still too. Yeah, he is going to activate the Whip. He's going to go get the demon that died to the Dark Betrayal. Desecration demon triggers are on. Yeah. So we'll see whether or not he's going to sacrifice to it. Do you think Schoolcraft sacrifices here? Any reason to? I mean, I don't think so. I think one of the ways he wins is by chaining gray merchants. So I think he wants to keep his black mana symbols on the table, if at all possible. He's definitely got the devotion advantage right yeah. now. I mean, the issue is that Whip also gives Edgar's creatures lifelink. So that the, the gray merchant in your opponent plan has, has some problems with it. Chances are this is why game one took so long. I bet, I bet this is exactly what game one kind of looked like. Well, this feels so inevitable in Michael Edgar's favor. You know, this, this whip's never leaving the board, and it's gonna, whip is very hard to race. Yeah, so now Demon's going to get tapped, and it's going to bite the dust as it was brought back from the whip. 
So that's it for Edgar's turn. Schoolcraft is going to untap. He's going to take a draw here. Again, remember, his hand not so great. He's just got discard spells over there, but he does have an Underworld Connection to actually find some action. But he's got a lot to contend with on the other side of the table. He's going to start by activating that, paying a life, drawing a card. So down to 13 he goes. See if he can find anything to help him here. He yeah. just found a copy of Pack Rat. And Schoolcraft may be able to still win the Pack Rat fight thanks to the two Mutabolts he has on his side yep. of the table. But there's a Bob White on Edgar's side. That's something just to, just, to, just to keep track of. So if Schoolcraft makes a Pack Rat, what Edgar can... Well, he'd first have to discard up to, to make his Pack Rat's 4-4s. Four but once he did that, he could Bioblade away the Pack Rats, or he could just Bioblade away Mutabolts, which yep. is also pretty good here. It's all about timing in this situation. Edgar's going to untap. He'll take a draw here in just a moment. Another copy of Bioblight. Interesting draw there. He can actually use two of those to take care of the Desecration Demon if he'd like. Yeah, and I, I think there's that's a good play, but... I just, I think he starts, at some point, Edgar's going to transition to the pack rat plan. I don't know if that's now or if that's in another turn, but it's going to happen here, and that's going to be how he'll end up getting the game. Yeah, I think we can see something along the lines of here. You know, if, if Edgar just passes the turn, Schoolcraft, he maybe activates pack rat, and in response, Edgar just activates both. He activates his pack rat twice to make two four fours, discarding two bio blights, though. Huh. Because if he, I mean, if he ball blights the pack rat that's in play, he loses his stuff too. So this is a really weird game. Yeah, I mean, there's the, also the option that Edgar could, if he wanted to, he could just double bio blight the demon, swing with his flyer. Yeah, and, and that seems kind of appealing just because Nightfield is so good. But I'm not entirely, I'm not convinced that that's correct because then he's like kind of losing out of the pack rat advantage. Yeah, I mean. What cards, the thing is that once the, it becomes a pack rat war, there's very few cards that actually matter because every card is just a pack rat. So yes, your Nightfall Spectre gets to draw you additional cards, but you're, you're discarding two cards to do that. And you know, really, wouldn't you rather just have more pack rats? Sure. But that's why he's gonna go on. So he goes out and double blitz the demons, swings with Nightfall Spectre, and he chops a swamp from Schoolcraft's deck. Schoolcraft gonna activate pack rat here. Probably just going to discard the thoughts because I think the land is probably a little more important, but he will discard the land right now. Yeah, and this is problematic actually for Michael Edgar that he he is now losing the pack rat war. And it, to be fair, it didn't take much for him to lose it. I mean, the two muta vaults actually really shift the game around quite a bit. And now for Schoolcraft, it's all about pack rat and the fact that he can activate underworld connections and then make a pack make two pack rats a turn basically. Yeah, I I'm gonna say I'm not. I don't particularly like the line that Michael Edgar's on right now. I think the, the strength of Whip may still carry the game for him. But yeah, he's behind on pack rats right now. And discarding Bioblades means he doesn't have a way to get rid of the Mutavolts if they get activated. Yeah, and let's not forget, I mean, he, this is the road he chose. He picked up another yeah. Bioblight, he had two, and he chose to go down this road as opposed to doing something else. I mean, if he loses the pack rat in this situation, unfortunately, I think he's only got himself to blame here because he, yeah. he, he chose his road of Spectre, is way more important. Let me take care of your Desecration Demon and see where Spectre can take me. But as you did mention, Whip can still carry the day here. Yeah, I mean, Schoolcraft right now can make, he could make two pack rats and he could just attack with them. And they were, you know, some of them might trade, but overall it would just be a, he'd be pushing damage through. Schoolcraft here does play Temple of Silence. He did scry, left his card on top. Now he's trying to figure out exactly what he needs to do with these pack rats, and I think he can actually just kind of be a little comfy here. Just kind of rest easy, no big rush. Well, huh. the rush is that Night Vale Spectre is taking cards from Schoolcraft's deck. Um, actually, it's interesting with that Scry. If Schoolcraft's playing it wisely here, he would leave a land on. He would leave Swamp on top. Of I was gonna. Deck. I was actually gonna bring that up too. I wonder if he knows. You know, like because. With the Nightfall Spectre, obviously it'll take the card, so you can actually scry a bad card on top, for example. Or you can scry a good card away and hope that the next card is bad. Yeah. He scryed and kept this card on top really, really quickly. So is he thinking, man, I really want this card, I can't wait to draw it next turn? Or is he thinking, I can't wait for you to have it because it sucks? I mean, certainly not want to leave something like Grey Merchant on top of the deck. I mean, that's the danger is that Edgar draws his own Grey Merchant or chops a Grey Merchant off Schoolcraft's deck. Because if that happens, Schoolcraft loses almost instantly. Packrat here, going to attack just one. You need two activations of the pack rat. Discard two thoughts. He uses. So I'm going to attack here for four. Edgar's just going to let that come through. So 
Schoolcraft will pass the turn back. Edward's going to quickly untap. He'll take a draw, see if he can find a card like Grey Merchant. He needs some help here because he is behind the board now. Yeah, when Packrat wins, Packrat wins quickly, especially with the help of Underworld Connections. We're going to find out what the top card is here from Schoolcraft. Was, did he make the clever play? And Desecration Demon. That one doesn't matter too much. No, that'll, that will eat a pack rat, but it is the Grey Merchant in Michael Edgar's hand. Two, three, four, five. That wow. was his draw for that the turn. That was draw for the turn. That was, that was a huge draw. Michael Edgar going to win game number two. We'll play a third one here in the Mono Black Devotion Mirror. He had to draw that that turn, presumably, or he would die, or at least chump blocking would start to happen, right? Yeah, I think Michael Edgar was saved a little bit by his own deck that game. Yeah, good draw. And yeah, he didn't need it on that turn or the next turn. The huge draw. Huge draw there for Michael Edgar. He'll send it to a third game here in the Mono Black Devotion Mirror. Again, the winner of this match is going to play against Aaron Barich and his Naya Aggro deck with a Hexproof sideboard. And we see some lovely hand-drawn pack rat tokens there on Schoolcraft's side. Speaking of sideboards, we'll take a look here. Edgar will be on the draw, so we'll start with Schoolcraft. We saw Dark Betrayal in that game. There are three in his sideboard. He's got a Devour Flesh, three Doom Blades, two Erebos, two Drown and Sorrow, and four Duresses. Pretty straightforward stuff if you ever watch the Mono Black Devotion Mirror. Four Duress, three Dark Betrayal. I think those are easy to bring in. Erebos as well, so you're looking at seven, eight, nine, and then you can make an argument for that, uh, for that Devour Flesh to be spell number 10. Yeah, certainly plenty of cards to board in. I'm not, I don't think he uses the Devour Flesh just because of how the, mat, the game plays out post-board. Um, I suppose he can board in if there's something else he likes less. But the other cards, I'm completely behind. You know, Dark Betrayal, Erebos, and Duress, all fantastic in the matchup. For Edgar's side, pretty easy as well. He's got three Life Fanes, two Dark Betrayals, two Doom Blades, two Farigas Cures, two Erebos, four Duress. So you can expect four Duress, two Erebos. That's six. Dark Betrayals are eight. Yep, so once again, it's the same three cards being boarded in on both sides. Mono Black, a very finely tuned weapon over the course of the last half year. Has it been that long already? It's been about that long since we first started Theros. I guess Theros, right? That was yep. in, like, September or October of last year? Pro Tour Theros, yeah, it was in the fall of last year. So yeah. it's been about, about six months of the standard format. Time is flying by, I tell you. It just seems like just, uh, just yesterday we were both in Dublin. At that Pro Tour. I still can't believe you played Green Red Monsters there. I know. It doesn't have enough islands in it. <laughs> it was good. It was, you had to have tested fine. Blue White, right? Yeah. Or like some sort of yeah. Revelation variant? There was a Revelation deck going on. And you just decided, no, thank you? Well, I find was, this, at, hard, at, at this had to be your teammates. I, I find this hard to believe. I mean, you can just be... I'll tell you, working with uh, Sean McLaren for that Pro Tour, he's the kind of player who plays it before even showing up. So, yeah. yeah. He's just going to play it. Yeah. I, I could be in that camp. The Pro Tour champ. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm truly surprised, especially with McLaren on your team, that you just opted to play creatures. I know. Actually, most of the people played blue-white. And yeah, I opted to play creatures. Blue-white was the best deck at the time. No one, Remember, no one knew about mono-black yet. That one re legitimately took the tournament by surprise. Not only did it take the tournament by surprise, I think my favorite part of the tournament is when you look at the top eight results, you see that the mono-blue deck wins the tournament and like the two best teams are playing or whatever, and then one mono black deck makes the top eight, and everyone's like, whatever. What is two this pack rat? Yeah, what is this pack? <laughs> what is this pack rat gray merchant underworld connections nonsense that this gentleman is doing? Give me those Thassas and Masterways. That deck's more splashy and cool, and all the best players are playing it. And it turns out mono black was uh, the place to be. It just needed a little bit more refining. When you're in a format where you don't know that mono black exists, I will say that Monsters is a much more appealing deck to play. That's true. Like, That's true. Yeah, you know, it's you just aren't aware that there's this really bad matchup out there because it wasn't there yet. I can only imagine at the Pro Tour when the debut of Mono Black happened and, you know, you're killing someone with a pack rat, how frustrated your opponent must be. I'm just like, are you serious with this? There's at least one guy who at the Pro Tour went back and found his friend. He's like, you won't believe what I just lost. Yeah. You're like, <laughs> pack rat. Some guy's two. playing pack rat yeah. in, the, in Constructed. He just played it and I just couldn't kill it. Yeah, it, it, Wow, well, he's going to lose his next round because he's playing pack rats. Yeah. Then, Unbelievable. Then, you know. Nice theme deck. <laughs> I'm sure that's what was happening there. Little did we all know. It was actually just insane. Pack yeah. rat was the best. Little did we know. That was probably the... Eh, hard to say if it was the best deck of that Pro Tour. Mono Blue was really good that weekend, too. I would say, I, I think Mono Black was the best deck for that Pro Tour. Absolutely. That's really good. It wasn't tuned yet. That's the thing. The Mono yeah. Black deck that did top eight, you know, there was, 
It had a lot of things going for it, but it wasn't all the way there yet. Yeah. It's always funny just to look back at Pro Tour decks that do well in the top eight and just like how untuned they were, but like they were tuned for that appropriate metagame because the Pro Tour, you're walking into an unestablished metagame. You're just trying to predict what you think is going to happen. So when you look at the decks that do well to Pro Tour, it's like, wow, two pack rats. What are you doing? <laughs> but but <laughs> hey, hey, then, it's it kind of makes zero. sense. Yeah, that's true. You know, it kind of makes sense just because, you know, you didn't really know what was going on. You didn't know what to expect from people coming into that tournament. You knew that green white aggro was going to be a thing. I think, yeah, I mean, everybody actually thought, like, that Naya was going to be one of the yeah. best decks at the time. That's, that's, like, kind of what you knew. So the information is so limited. That's what makes those tournaments so interesting and difficult to prepare for. It's just wide open. Yeah, that's that blue, mono blue devotion has hardly changed from the event. Yeah, yeah. I know people tried Omen Speakers at that tournament and stuff like that, but... Vaporkins, Omen Speakers sometimes. I mean, sometimes well, we even have some players this weekend we're playing Omen Speakers. Yeah but relatively unchanged because, again, it doesn't have a lot of options. It has a real core of the deck. You can't really change a lot. Can't change too much from this deck either. Mono Black Devotion? Yeah. No, not too much. I mean, there's a lot of splashing you can do with the deck. The but... scary thing, too, is, like, imagine if this deck got a new card. You know, some sort of card that provides more devotion or something like that. Like, I don't think this deck needs any help. I think it's good enough. I suppose Silence the Believers could be a card that comes into this deck, but I don't think this one needs very much help here as both players are going to draw their opening hands. All right, so Schoolcraft on the play for the deciding game. If you remember, the winner of this game will go on to play Aaron Barich and his Naya aggro slash hexproof deck. Yeah, he's been cutting up this tournament. Every time we come to Dallas, he seems to just slice and dice his way through these tournaments. Let's take a look at the hand of Michael Edgar. You've got a Hero's Downfall, a Duress, a Thought Season, Underworld Connections, and three Swamps. This is going to be one of those games where it's like, you know, I feel like it's like this this nuclear like deterrence thing where both players, both players just like take each other, all of each other's cards. So it's going to be like, you know, all right, he's in the Thought Season, the Connections, then there's going to be a Thought Season, a Duress back at him. Edgar hinting at hinting at uh, Hero's Downfall is the card that should be taken here. I, I don't think that'll be the choice. I've got a feeling that's wrong. I'm just going to put that out there. I would take Underworld Connection to the spot. Well, I don't think taking a discard spell does very much. Yeah, I mean, both players are going to run out of cards. It's just going to be both players will have three lands, no spells in play, and then one of them will top deck a card drawer. I mean, you, you hope it's you. I mean, if you take a Thought Seize, then you're just going to get duressed. So yeah. Yeah, you just have to take the card that after, after the right. dust settles and all the discard happens... You have to take the best card so, after all that stuff happens. Actually, every card is going to be discarded. Yeah. All right, so now Thought Seize back. We see two lands. Duress, Desecration, Demon, Underworld Connections. Well, those, that Connections is going to have to yeah. go now. Take his Connections. That's fine. He, you're going to get Duress. There's a chance he might take your Duress unless you picked up a Connections, and then we just go from there. With any luck for Schoolcraft, his Temple finds something that he can hide, and that's pretty much it, at least in my opinion. Well, that's it. I, I'm surprised that he started on Thought Seize instead of on Duress here. He's going to go ahead and take the duress so that he can thought seize the connections next turn. Sure. <laughs> Wait, did he take... He took the duress, really? Yeah, he took the duress. Wow. I mean, unless he picked up another... He had to have picked up another discard spell then, he right? He has one. He has a duress. But he, but Schoolcraft... Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Never mind. I was going to say Schoolcraft can just duress his duress, but yeah, this makes Schoolcraft sense. Schoolcraft had top deck the duress, yeah, that yeah, would be pretty, pretty insane. That's kind of risky, though, right? When you're playing a deck that has eight one-mana discard spells after sideboard? He's protecting his hero's downfall. But I agree, there's a little risk in there. You can just get top decked right out. I wouldn't want to open myself up to that, personally. Well, by keeping Hero's Downfall, you're protecting yourself against a top decked Pack Rat on the other side. That's true. So there's, there's like a case for both ways. Edgar will take a draw here. It's a Muta Vault. Well, you can't let that Underworld Connections resolve, so you're gonna have to, gonna have, to <laughs> have some more discard. Yeah. Draw for the turn was Gray, Gray Merch. Merchant. Yeah, this isn't the first time we've seen this happen. Discard spells flying fast and furious in the opening turn to the game. Edgar going to decide if he wants to play a Swamp or a Muta Vault. I would want to play a Swamp in this situation because if I peel a Nightfell Spectre, I'm slamming it into play. Absolutely. Nightfell, one of the more, one of the important cards in the matchup. Especially because Edgar was able to hang on to that hero's downfall. He's not scared of Desecration Demon. Schoolcraft going to draw his card for the turn. Yeah, he kept this card on top, whatever it was. He plays his land that's Muta Vault for the turn, so we still have... It looks like the card he kept on top was another Muta Vault. Look what Mr. Michael wow, Edgar drew. Wow, it's a called shot right there. Huh? Ding-a-ling-ling-ling. See a Temple of Silence in Schoolcraft's hand. He's still just got Grey Merchant and Desecration Demon. 
And as you mentioned, Edgar was protecting his hero's downfall by taking the discard spell. Yeah, Schoolcraft actually isn't just going to, instead of playing that demon, he knows about the hero's downfall. He's going to scry to try to scry his way to a removal spell, as that's more important than playing the demon at the moment. Puts that card on the bottom, passes it back to Edgar. I mean, the hard thing is that a scry land actually doesn't do anything here, which is why I'm not sure I'm a huge fan of playing it, because he either puts a card on the bottom, or he puts a card on the top, but he can't really do that because Nightvale Spectre will take the card that's on the top. Yeah. Schoolcraft going to take a draw here. Needs to find a removal spell. Dark Betrayal, Heroes Downfall, Vile Blight, something to get that Spectre off the table as it can start to run away with the game. And, well, speaking of called shots once again, Vile Blight, the draw this turn four, Nicholas Schoolcraft. I'm pretty sweet at this. When you play the deck, does it do that too? I never played the deck before. I've I mean, never if, played I'm just a gonna say, single game if, with Mono if, Black. If what you're doing right now is something you, it's like a skill you have with Mono Black, you should really be playing this deck. I think you're right. I think you're right. Black, I could, I could use the Thoughtseize right now. Oh, wow. I, I despise playing the best deck in formats. Expect, I, I don't know. There's some. I, I probably would enjoy playing Mono Black too because it's like a rock deck and I've played rock over like the history of my life quite a bit. But I just despise like this deck, play, just playing it. I don't know why. The thought of playing it, I suppose, is here's a Bile Blight to take care of that Nightfield Spectre. I played it at one tournament this year, and boy, the deck sure is powerful. Yeah, you play it's with it, so you're like, good. It's like you play with it and you just, you can tell. I mean, you're like, this deck's really good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not saying I'm right. <laughs> it's not. Pretty it's far not from it, actually. Fun. It's not as fun as drawing seven cards in a turn, but yeah. boy, it's good. I want to catch Brush Strider and have it be good. That's what I want to do. And to be uh, fair, it's fine. Thought sees here has the choice between Desecration Demon and Grey Merchant. Edgar has no cards in his hand other than more swamps than that hero's downfall. I think I would take Grey Merchant. Because I, I, just, I just don't care about Desecration Demon. And, like, the life gain, even though it's small, it could end up mattering. And that's not something I actually want to have to worry or deal with. Where, like, Desecration Demon isn't going to do anything. But he is going to take care of the Desecration Demon. Temple picked up here for Schoolcraft. Yeah, so I, I think at this point we're we're racing to whoever can find card advantage, whether it's a Connections or an Erebos or a Night Vale. Yeah, Schoolcraft actually has kind of advantage in this situation simply because he has eight Scrylands, he has four Temple of Silence and four Temple of Deceit to go along with thirteen Swamps and four Muta Vaults, where uh, where Edgar only has four Temples. So, yeah, so Schoolcraft has the advantage in Temples. Edgar has the advantage in that he plays Night Vales. Yes, as we see as he draws another. Now Schoolcraft is forced to draw a removal spell almost immediately. Yeah, every turn he doesn't draw one, things get worse for him. So let's see if he can find another one here. I'm not going to call a shot this time. Well, he, he drew the Bile Blight last time for the Night Vale. Here's a thought sees. It's going to take care of the hero's downfall. Well, that clears the way for potential Muta Vaults. Well, not Muta Vaults, but for the, at least this Grey Merchant. Yeah. It's going to come in a little drain and gain for two. I guess things are better off this way because if had that been a Desecration Demon, things are much hairier, so. Let's play at the top of the deck, shall we? Edgar, Trigger? Yeah, both players with no hand. Uh, right now, Edgar certainly has the advantage. He has, he's playing two cards a turn, whereas Schoolcraft's playing one. But the race on the board does favor Schoolcraft. Let's see what Schoolcraft can draw. Again, removal spell is uh, kind of the key here right yeah. now. You can still get out top decks. when You can be outdrawn two to one, and you can still draw better, so. That's what Schoolcraft's going to have to do at the moment. Mutaball gets fired up. That's going to come into the red zone here with the Grey Merchant. Again, both players sitting at 14. Mutaball's going to block a Mutaball. Grey Merchant happily comes across for two. Edgar's going to go down to 12. And I don't know whether he has a four drop or whether he was just playing around Bile Blight there. I think it's the latter. Erebos the draw here for Edgar. Well, that's pretty big. There is a Dark Betrayal. That's pretty big. As Erebos would have been... Close to turning on right away. So now that's going to show up. He's got some life to play with. Not a ton, but he's got some. Yeah. Let's see what Schoolcraft's able to find this turn. At the very least, he can fire at Mutavault and get in here for four points I of damage. I think that Edgar wanted to main phase that draw two off Erebos in case he hit a, a temple. It's a little risky. If he finds a card that's actually relevant, he could just get targeted by a top deck discard spell, too. Oh, you're absolutely right. There's a bit of a trade off there. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying there's a, definitely a decision we made. Is Wow, Edgar picks up. Just a couple of lands and a thought season. He doesn't have a lot of life to play with there, but for example, if he doesn't find something with the next activation, he just loses. So he's got to pass the turn back over to Schoolcraft, who will take a draw here. I think you got to keep coming with that Muta Vault, my friend. Yeah, he's going to go ahead and make sure that the coast is clear for Muta Vault. He duresses away a thought season. Yep. 
And Michael Edgar is going to be down to his last top deck here. He goes to two. Draw. It's a and, pack rat. Well, that's that's a good one. That is a good magic card right now. <laughs> that is a really good draw. Going to try to save the day. It's not insane. It's just merely good. Just because he has to make a rat. And then one has to block a Muta Vault, and the other one has to block a Grey Merchant. Two damage will be dealt to each creature, and so he'll lose the rat. Like, if he had a Muta Vault yeah. in play, it would be completely insane. As it is, this is just going to buy him another turn, but it'll also kill the Muta Vault. It's not also insane because he can't, he can't draw extra cards anymore. Yeah. Like, if he, if he peels off a Grey Merchant, things are going really well for him. I mean, next turn, he can make another rat and double block the Grey Merchant. So he, he can... No, he's out, he's out of rats. Because he has oh, to block the Muta Vault. Yeah, right. he has he to, to block both. both. So he needs, to, he needs another top deck. That's a Muta Vault. That'll, that'll work. Could be better. But yeah, it'll, it'll work for now. Buys him a turn. It doesn't stabilize him, though. He really needs to draw something like Grey Merchant. And Schoolcraft just kind of has the upper hand, and I th he's going to press that advantage now with that draw. He draws Underworld Connections. I think he can draw in the main phase now in case he finds a Bile Blight or something of that nature. Absolutely. So he's going to draw right away. He gets to serve in. You have to block with the Muta Vault. That's good to go. There are still top decks to be had here for Michael Edgar. There's a Swamp for Desecration Demon. All it will take is one creature from Nicholas Schoolcraft to take the game here. One creature, one removal spell, Mutavolt, Pack Rat, anything. He's got a Desecration Demon. That'll that actually do, do it. it. He's going to play this. He'll tap four. There's Desecration Demon. That's an extension of the hand. Nicholas Schoolcraft going to win this match over Michael Edgar, in which I thought he was going to be a dog here because he does not have access to Knife Hill Spectre, but he takes it down anyway. Two games to one. He'll be moving on to play against Aaron Barrich and his Naya deck.